Welcome back to Nonsense Reviews. Today's actually my first suggested review. They give a list of others, but I didn't have any of those, so we're gonna take a look at Mendel Palace. The first game ever made by Game Freak. You know, it doesn't say it anywhere on here, but... Published by Hudson Soft here in the US, and then uh, Namco over in Japan. But I think the music in the game shows where some of our favorite Pokemon tunes come from. First thing I want to say right away, the original artwork for this game is far more appropriate. The chibi style fits perfectly, and you can tell exactly which character is which in the game. The artwork we got is just weird and has this like under budget anime vibe or something to it. Alright, it looks like we have a level s- Oh, I'm gonna have nightmares after this. Anyways, the gameplay is different, but fun. Press either A or B to slide the floor tile in front of you, or sometimes the one you're standing on. I don't know, it's kind of random sometimes. But you slide the enemies into the wall, and they fucking explode! Get through nine rounds of minions, and then fight the boss. First up, we have these strange, like, Super Sentai looking people, or maybe a Daikon Radish or something, I don't know. Oh my god, they split into two little Daikon putty people! Am I a bonus room or something? Uh, not... Okay, bitchin'. Step on the moon and you go blind! Or just get a bunch of stars, cause points. And the first boss is... No one! Yay. Oh, this fucker just pulled that your princess is in another castle bullshit. A fucking asshole. So Spiky Head McDickface takes whoever that was away, and then on to level 2. Bouncing Big Mouth Bitch Boys, or I don't know, they have mohawks, maybe they're bird keepers. Same exact situation as before, only these guys jump. Not a whole lot of variety of gameplay really, but it's actually extremely intense. This is the kind of game that'll make you tense your entire body as you run for your life trying to get to a spot to turn around and slam those fuckers right into the wall. It's actually much easier said than done, but we'll get back to the subject here. After a short time, we reach the boss of level 2, and is that Gary's music I hear? Well, yeah, but it's only the first 3 seconds or so, then it loops into its own track. So Gary starts bouncing around like an asshole before we even get control, or Panda gets control because I'm fucking dead at this point. And holy shit, he fucked him up right away. Not actually sure what happened there, but I don't know, now we can try with both of us. Luckily I was able to get him stuck in a loop while Panda knocked him into the wall, so... Good teamwork. Yeah, fuck you Gary, and your fucking grandpa. Send kids across the country on foot to fight animals for profit. Yeah, real fucking responsible. Alright, on to level 3. Okay, we have Michelangelo's prick brother doodling on the floor instead of the ceiling. And when he does, it locks the tile from being flipped, so that sucks. Sometimes they come to life and become enemies, too. This is when things start to ramp up in difficulty, and if you aren't on your game from here on out, you're going to die. And trust me, I die. A lot. About 12 game overs later, and we finally reach the boss of this level. God, the music in this game is so easy to groove to. Well, it looks like she just spawns some enemies and leaves. Yeah, it's easier than most of the levels up to this point, I'd say, but don't let that fool you. It's still hard as fuck. The tension is still enough to make you squeak or make weird noises if you use every fiber you're being to beat the level. Next, we have the Hawaiian Punch Guy. Or Brock. I don't know, I'm gonna call him Brock. Whoa, 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 maybe it's just B, because he definitely got rid of the rocks. Motherfucker can jump! So he tried this for about half an hour straight before trying a different level. I'm glad that it's an option to switch levels when you get stuck and not lose your place in the previous level. Let's go fight our clones instead. They don't quite mirror you, but move whenever you move and sorta of copy when you flip tiles. But the thing that really caught us off guard was the music. It only plays when they move. When we first noticed it, both of us stopped and wondered what the fuck was going on. Panda says it legitimately gave him goosebumps. And oh, it's just terrifying and so tense and creepy. Oh, I, I don't know what it is about it. It's just 
unsettling. Oh, it's like nails on chalkboard. It makes my fucking skin crawl. <sighs> we decided to hop around levels a bit and realized we were doing things a bit out of order. The biker looking guy ended up being extremely easy compared to what we've been doing so far. Alright, boss time. Ooh, they made us thick? With three C's. Still easy as shit compared to the other levels. I've been dreading this since I first laid eyes on this abomination. It's the only level we haven't done yet. You know what? If I gotta play it, we're gonna do a fucking montage. We're finally at the last place, which I'm assuming is Mendel Palace. And so far, it's essentially just a random mix match of all the previous levels with some of the bosses sprinkled here and there. On round 9, this guy jumps you out of nowhere and takes you into the fucking sky. To another palace! With swastikas on the floor! What in the fucking fuck? <sighs> alright, alright. Back to the point. So these karate dicks send tiles back at you, but for the most part, it's the same as the rest. Just kill them. On to the final boss. She jumps all over the fucking place and transforms you into random enemies. It's tough as shit, but it does eventually wear off. And then it's just the same as every other boss. Just kill them. Not really much of a final boss in my opinion, but it was difficult as fuck. So, now we kiss some ghosts. Yay! What the fuck am I looking at? Can I even show this on YouTube? I don't know, I guess we'll find out. Oh, well, that's the end. Roll credits, no story, no explanation. Maybe it's all in the manual, I don't know. I don't have a check, so... In summary, it's a good challenge with an equal amount of fun, but... I would have never beat this if Panda hadn't been helping me play it through as so. well. Ding! Thanks. Like I said, great game, but... I've got some trauma I gotta go bury. You know who you are. Actually, looking at the, uh, US art, I actually can't tell which one it is. So, I stand corrected.